YouTube. Um, it's been a hot minute, so like, what's up? How are you guys? I'm really happy to be making another video, and I'm really sorry I haven't like posted more. I've been on vacation, and I just got home, and like life's been crazy, but I'm here. Um, if you couldn't tell by the title, today I'm going to be telling you guys kind of about what it's like in a psych ward. Um, so like if you guys were like, you know, considering maybe reaching out for help, you know, or you know, you know you're going or something like that, or you're just curious, you know, it might help to ease some of your anxiety about, you know, all of that. So yeah, um, I like wrote down like um, some of the rules and like pointers and stuff. So if I'm looking down, that's why it's just in my notebook. Okay, so I don't even know where to start with this. Um, there's like three different like levels of inpatient that I've been to, I guess. Um, they all kind of have the same guidelines though, but specifically I'm gonna split it into two different hospitals because it varies from hospital to hospital and I want you guys to have like all the information that I have, you know? Okay, so um, <clears throat> for the first hospital I was at, when you're admitted, um, if you're voluntarily admitted, it's way easier than being involuntarily admitted because if you're involuntarily admitted and they decide they need to keep you but you don't want to stay, then that means that they pink slip you. And you don't want to be pink slipped because that means that they put a 72 hour hold on you and you have to stay at the hospital for a minimum of 72 hours for evaluation and just observation. Um, yeah, that sucks. Um, it's not one of my fun pastimes. <laughs> so um, if you have the option, go voluntarily, okay? Um, I'm giving you advice that I never take. I never go voluntarily because I never like going to the hospital. So I'm never just gonna be like, hey, yeah, <laughs> take me to the hospital. Let's go have fun. Like, no, I literally hate it there, literally. Um, I know it's like beneficial to people and sometimes it's even beneficial to me, but I just don't like, like the lack of freedom. You know, I hate feeling confined and stuff like that. So I don't like being there. Um, but yeah, it can definitely help you, so don't let, like, my opinion, like, scare you away from it. I know it's helpful. It's helped me through certain things, and it can definitely, like, help you, too. You just get what you put into it, you know? Um, so when you're first brought there, either way, involuntarily or voluntarily, you go to the ER, then they check you in, and almost immediately they call you back into, like, a room where they, like, examine you, take vitals and all that, and then they put you in like the locked part of the ER where they hold you basically so you can't like run away, I guess. Um, but you're never like sitting in the ER for a long time or the ED for a long time because you're considered a threat to yourself or others. So they always like take you back faster than everyone else. So then you're in the ER. Um, usually there's like a um, psych team that'll come to evaluate you. Um, and they'll like ask you questions about how you're feeling, if you're feeling suicidal, if it's passive or active, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, all these questions. Okay, I could probably quote them like the back of my hand. Um, but I'm not going to tell them to you guys, because if you're going, I don't want you to prepare for these questions, okay? I want you to answer them honestly and get the help that you need, okay? Okay. So, yeah, they ask you a lot of questions, and based off of your questions, they'll either decide A, you're good to go home and then you'll follow up with outpatient or B they need to keep you and you know make sure you're safe and all that so if they keep you you can either be sent to the inpatient unit or they can hold you in the ER okay being held in the ER is boring you just watch TV all day talk to people it's really sucks like if there's one thing in the hospital that doesn't help it's being in the ED like don't spend all your time in the ER if they're trying to keep you in the ER advocate for yourself to get out of the ER because it's horrible there like they don't do anything for you except keep you there like they literally just hold you there like it does nothing okay so yeah but when you go to like the psych um, unit or whatever um, <clears throat> different units are obviously gonna have different rules but I like to think like the guidelines are pretty much the same because I've been to like so many of them you know um, so you get there, they're going to check you in, they're going to do body checks, you know, check for any self-harm scars, check to make sure you're not hiding anything, all of that. And then they're going to like take your vitals, do a urine, blood sample, all of that, just to make sure you're physically healthy enough to be on the psych ward. And then um, after that, they're going to like put you in a gown or clothes or whatever they make you wear there. And then you're like free to go into the unit once you're, um, once you're like checked in and all that. Um, 
some units are like open units which means you're with other patients other ones of them you're literally just in your room by yourself um, but the rules of these two are pretty much the same so I'm gonna like share those with you guys okay so once you're checked in you know they're gonna go through the rules with you unless you've been there a million times like me and they know you know um, they're gonna go through the rules with you and the rules are pretty much so this is the rules here are for like the um it was called the let's just call it c5 okay that's that's where it was these are the rules for c5 um but there's another unit and it's called t5 and the rules are pretty much the same just a little more freedom because you're not confined to a certain room all day and honestly it's so much more beneficial because you're not just being left in a room to watch tv with the pca and all your thoughts so yeah um this I wrote, it was actually a diary entry, fun fact, um, about the first time I was hospitalized. And um, the rules were, um, I spent three days in the pediatric, this was when I was 13, okay, so I was 13 when I wrote this, like a while ago. Um, I spent three days in the pediatric hospitalization and three days in the psych ward. Three hours of counseling a day, an hour of rec therapy, an hour of regular therapy, an hour of meeting with a psychiatrist as well. Also, no sharps, no closed doors, 24-7 monitoring by camera, and sometimes you're on one-to-one, -one, which means you have someone sit in there with you. Um, vitals checked five times a day minimum, a constant PCA and RN checking on, in on you every 15 minutes. Locked bathrooms, your toiletries are locked in a cabinet. You have to be washed when showering slash going to the bathroom. You can leave your room only once a day for a five minute walk on your floor with a PCA. Um, um, that's all the ones that I wrote, but the other ones that I didn't write are like, um, it depends on the unit, but sometimes they let you have outside clothes, sometimes they don't. Um, either way, you're not allowed to have strings, so hoodies with strings, sweatpants with strings, shoe strings, any of that. Generally no shoes, you have to wear like the non-slip hospital socks. Um, no outside food because you know if you're on an open union people have allergies um, no sharps like of any kind like they give you sporks um, like they don't even give you like regular fork I don't know there's just like a lot of rules and it sucks like it literally sucks to have someone in your grill all the time but I mean they're trying to help you or whatever so yeah um, those are the rules and what it's like being there. Um, <clears throat> so, pretty much, like, you really do get what you put into it, okay? So, if you go there and you're like, you know what, I'm here, I might as well get the help I need, I might as well just be honest with them and be open with them, then you're going to get a lot more out of it than if you just go there and sit there and lie to them to get out of it, okay? Because fact is, if you just lie to get out of it, you will be coming back because you're not better. You're not changing anything, you know? Um, yeah, that's advice that I give but never take, ever. Um, I mean, also your experience really depends on, like, the place you are and the people you're with. Like, your nurses and your psychiatrists and your therapists, like, they can really impact what you're getting out of it. Because if you have, like, a crappy one, then, like, you're not going to care to share anything with them, you know? Um, also, like, the people you're with, like, on the unit, whether you're on an adult or pediatric unit, the other uh, patients that you're surrounded by can really impact a lot, because either, you know, you're going to have someone that you can just relax with and spend time with and vibe with to pass the horrible time in there, or you're not going to vibe with anybody like me, and you're just going to stay in your room and watch Food Network all day, and avoid all contact with people. Don't do that. So, yeah, it really depends. Um, but... It's basically, it's a lot of therapy, um, and before you're released, you have, like, a family session that determines, like, what you're gonna do afterwards, so, like, I've been released a few times, and once I was released into IOP, which is intensive outpatient, I've been released into PHP, which was partial hospitalization, fun fact, which I got kicked out of, um, I've been released into just straight outpatient, like, it depends, they'll set up a different plan for you, depending on, like, your needs, um, so yeah, um, family, whether it's your parents, your guardian, whoever, or just anyone close to you, 
is going to be really involved in making sure like everything's okay you know and making sure you follow through with your plans after release or discharge whatever um so there is like a certain schedule you stick to um you wake up you take your meds they take your vitals then you're supposed to go to group or whatever but i usually just go back to sleep and then um you have breakfast at like eight eight yeah breakfast comes at eight and then you have snack at 10 30 and then you have lunch at 12 snack at 3 30 dinner at 5 30 snack at 8 30 so that's like your meal schedule um but as for the groups i don't even remember the times of the groups i just remember that groups like there's literally group after group after group up until dinner that you're supposed to go to you're supposed to go to like a bunch of group therapy which like no but whatever like i do i have to admit okay it sometimes it is helpful to like be there and like see other people's perspectives on things but usually when i'm there i'm just in such a bad mindset i don't care you know so yeah um that's kind of your schedule i went over rules i went over schedule i went over discharge i think that's pretty much it like um as for like the psych ward and like the rules and the schedule and you know the admission and discharge process but if you have any more questions you can always comment them or like dm me or whatever um and i'll you know try to get back to you um because i'm horrible at responding to messages i'm really sorry i'm trying to do better okay okay so thank you so much for watching um i hope this did like help prepare you some if you're going inpatient or if you're considering it so you kind of know what to expect um obviously it does vary for hospital to hospital but the rules i told you were kind of like standard rules you know so i hope you guys have a fabulous day evening morning whenever you're watching this okay um if you want to like comment subscribe engage with me i'll engage with you i love engaging with you guys um thank you guys so much for watching and take care of yourselves okay okay bye